What's up guys? Hybrid Mongoose here and welcome back to another episode of the Hybrid Mongoose podcast. And guys, the special guest today is DX1. And uh guys, we had a, like such a great time. It was such a good conversation. Uh the news dropped right right about like uh the Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee and uh we were talking a lot about that in this video. If we would have known about trading at this time, we would have we would have definitely touched base about that. But this is mostly talking about you know, the Pokemon Go game integrating with the Nintendo Switch and Let's Go Pikachu and all that. So it, it's a, it, it was a really great conversation um, and, and it was awesome. But before this podcast starts, I want to talk about some new merch that I got, actually. And as you guys can see here, we got uh, some shirts available. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to help support my trip to Chicago Go Fest this year and get an awesome shirt in the process, you know, make sure you check out the links in the description below. We got white and black variations of the shirts. So we got the hybrid mongoose essential shirt. Uh, we got the hybrid, <laughs> we got the high hide bread mangoes hybrid mongoose shirt, which it has the, you know, monkey emoji, you know, you got the hide bread mango. And then on the back, it actually has the hybrid mo mongoose logo. And then uh, there's white variations as well. So like I said, guys, if you guys want to help out my trip, help fund the trip and get an awesome shirt in the process, check out the links below. Let's get right into the podcast. And without further ado, welcome my special guest to the podcast, DX1. What's up, man? Good evening. How are you guys doing? How are you doing today, sir? Hybrid Mongoose. <laughs> nice to be here, man. What's up? I, I'm doing good. Actually, uh, <laughs> I recently had a moment where I felt like I was 80 years old. Uh, oh, wow. Because I accidentally pulled something in my back, and uh, it took me out for a couple days. So I'm okay now. I'm a lot better. But... Uh, um, I was just I was just telling the story and it's like every time every time a guy gets hurt, he always wants to be like, I got attacked by a bear and that's why I got this scar right here, you know. And you, yeah. <laughs> you wanted to be manly, but no, I was I was brushing my teeth and bent over to get a drink out of the faucet and that was it. My back was out, so I barely bent over too. I was like, <laughs> Ouch. So, yeah, yeah. No, I'm well, good glad now. You're, glad you're feeling all right, man. Seriously. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so, oh, first, very serious question first. I got to ask you this. Okay. So, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No, man. No. <laughs> good. Pepperoni good. And cream peppers all day. Yeah. Oh, God. That's a really good combo right there. Yep. Isn't it? it but either... if you're reversal, if you're reversal, you take the pineapples off the pizza and use them on Pidgeys, apparently. <laughs> right yeah yeah use them on pidgeys that's funny <laughs> yeah no it my favorite one of my favorite combos is is uh pepperoni bacon and green peppers that right there is that i respect that that is very good combo <laughs> so I, I, I think i've had that before i think it's that's it's like it's, it's like good. my super alternate pizza combo <laughs> uh so i just watched your video on uh you know like why you should buy a nintendo switch you know uh about the whole let's go pikachu let's go eevee and um you had a lot of insight on it it was it was good to you know you did a lot of research on it um you know looking at alternate interviews and all that other stuff it was good it's a good video right, um thank you. and uh you know it's funny because like you know one of two things are happening right now in the community and i think you're noticing this Either people are reinstalling Pokemon Go, <laughs> that's one. Yes. Because I've started to notice new people playing in my area. Like I'd be walking around and they'd be playing, and I'd be like, "You're new, aren't you?" You know, like, <laughs> like, because I've been playing yeah. the game since the start, right? So I kind of know who's around in my local area. So when I see new people playing, it's really cool. You know, I talk to them and just say, "Hey, what's up?" You know. Right. And, same for uh, same for South Jersey, Philadelphia. I know I know literally everybody that plays Pokemon Go in my area at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it, one of the things that people were saying, and it's true, I mean, I, I actually just got my Switch today, like, in the mail. So I was happy about that. Nice. Yep. So the one thing I was worried about, and it's probably going to happen, is closer to November, as soon as the game is out, they're probably going to sell out of Nintendo Switches. Like, that's my that's what I think is going to happen. They're just going to be sold out everywhere once that time well, comes. Well, that's a very valid theory. However... Nintendo has done absolutely the most of what they could do to ramp up 
production because the Switch oh, has right. already come close to selling out before with Mario Odyssey. That's true. So yes, that's a mistake that they cannot make again. So I feel like Nintendo has enough um, hardware stored up for this big commercial wave that they have coming the holiday season. I don't, I don't see them having get that issue. But again, it wouldn't be a surprise because this game, as you said. Um, it's already sold out on Amazon, so. Right. Yeah, yeah I ended up, um, the only reason I, the main reason I got the Switch when I did, uh, was because, um, my friend, I was laid up in bed, you know, with my back hurt, and he sends me a message, and he's like, dude, 20% off everything on eBay, one day sale. Mm. I just, I just bought a Nintendo Switch for, like, $248, and I was like, what? So, that I did it, and I ended up paying like ten bucks more. But I mean, I paid two okay. two fifty eight or something like that for a brand new Nintendo Switch. Yeah, usually you're talking three fifty for a yeah. new Switch retail. Right. So that's I, a, that's a deal. Yeah, no, it's a definitely a good deal. I think it ended up being like sixty five or seventy dollars off total when everything was all said and done. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah, so I was like, I I posted it on Twitter too. I was like, guys, look, one day sale. Yeah. <laughs> quickly get on it. quickly get it you know uh what was, i forget the term you were using for this game the the um let's go pikachu and eevee you you called it a specific what is it called you said it was a certain type of game just to get more people into it a doormat a I doormat what that's yeah. what it was yes yeah and i i fully agree with that that is so true but uh you know what's funny though some of the doormat well, what people would consider the, you know, like doormat games are still very successful. Like, like where's my, where's our uh, Pokemon Snap too? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. where's that at? Absolutely. You know, because like could do that. You know, easily, they, easily. They could do that. Yeah, because that's going to be a really, really fun. You know, if they did a, a Pokemon Snap too, it'd be amazing. It, it would, Absolutely. It, and especially now with today's technology, I mean, it, it's crazy. So absolutely, I know a lot of people that would be all over that instantly. Yep. And uh, you actually, uh, so it has been confirmed. I haven't done my own research enough to know, though, but it has been confirmed that, you know, the transfer from Pokemon Go to Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee is going to be like a one-way transfer. Yes. Yeah, that's, um, that's kind of sad, but I, I kind of get it, you know. I totally understand it because I believe that the way that they're trying to treat this game is that Again, they don't want the feature to be abused in any way because I feel like if you have a feature where it's a two-way trading mechanism, you could kind of figure out a way to take advantage of that and like maybe get yourself regionals. I don't know how people would take advantage of it, but I could see that oh. happening with people. So again, I like the concept of developing your own Safari Zone. And um, I remember how much fun the Safari Zone was from the main series games, from Fire Red and Leaf Green to Ruby and Sapphire right. to, I guess, X and... Did they have a Safari Zone in X and Y? I'm like, I'm so rusty with the 3DS game. I mean, I it was an Alpha Sapphire, so yeah, I think it was. Okay, so... There was a Safari Zone, yep. So essentially what you're doing is you're going outside and catching um, all these awesome Pokemon and Pokemon Go that maybe you wouldn't be able to find in the Kanto region very easily. So, oh, yeah. but now what's interesting is that a lot of the Pokemon that are rare in the main series games are rare in Pokemon Go. But say you live in a community where you s see a lot more Chansey than the main series game. So then right. you can potentially create yourself a Safari Zone with the Pokemon Go Park feature incorporated to make yourself... A Safari Zone of Chanseys or Rhydons or whatever whatever Pokemon you're missing in Let's Go, mm -hmm. okay, go outside and catch it and transfer that game to the Switch. Also, there's another um, thing that they said on the interview. I think Junichi Masuda, who is basically running um, the Pokemon production, the production team, he's basically the president of the whole thing, and I believe he stated that it's geared towards people that actually can't go out and play Pokemon Go. Oh. And so parents or loved ones, brothers, sister, whoever it may be, could go out and catch good Pokemon for these people and then transfer them to the Switch and try to help them out a little bit. You know, that's actually, that way it's a thorough Pokemon experience. 
That is really cool, actually. I didn't think about that. Because, like, you know, I'm not going to get into the whole spoofing thing, but, I mean, that's one of the number one reasons why people say they spoof, you know, is because, like, you know, disabled people can't play the game and things like that. So this would definitely kind of make it so anybody can play, which is really cool. I would have never thought of that, you know? So Yeah, that's... It's, it's, I like it. I think it's a really good concept, and I think... It is, like, as I said, I think this is the perfect doormat to get people into Pokemon. The numbers, the amount that the community actually grows from this, we'll have to see. But I think it's a really good step in the right direction. I have, I've been saying this since, um, for a long time now. Sorry, my computer, my computer, like, falls asleep when I don't have my mouse running. Um, <laughs> All good. But, I remember I've been talking about this. I remember talking about this to Trainer Tips and Mystic Seven back in Taiwan, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, I I have a lot of cards on the table for this. I have a lot, um, a lot of high hopes for this title, mm -hmm. and of course, the 2019 title is going to be absolutely massive. Um, Denise Masuda, I believe Denise Masuda said this. I could be incorrect. I think it was somebody else, but a higher end representative of Nintendo said, you know, they this is the game that longtime fans have been waiting for. Um, of course, referring to the game in 2019. Right. And I feel like right now we could be getting maybe a yearly release of a Pokemon game, much like Call of Duty has a yearly release of mm -hmm. a different company. So I think Treyarch releases the game, and then another company releases a Call of Duty game. And we could get a Let's Go series and a main series game like every other year. And oh, I think that'd be... that would just be absolutely incredible. Oh, but yeah, again, definitely. But say that it depends on how the games are received and, you know, how many people buy, how many people download it, and how the community reacts to it. But I'm fingers crossed for some positive feedback, some, for some exponentially positive feedback for these titles. So we can kind of get something like that rolling. Oh, God, yeah, I'm totally, I mean... That's 95% of the reason why I even got the Switch in the first place, because I knew <laughs> I knew I wanted to play Let's Go Pikachu. I'm going Pikachu. Are you going to go Pikachu? I, I am going Pikachu. Okay. It's interesting. Good, good, good. Yeah, because, like, I don't know. Pikachu just resonates with me more because I was into the anime as a, you know, when I was younger, and Pikachu was always that awesome, you know, wouldn't get into the Pokeball and just had this defiant nature and... I always mm. liked I always liked Pikachu. So like Eevee I think is cool, but I'm going if I had a choice between the two, it's definitely Pikachu. Now, so. do you know why that they are pushing Eevee so much as this secondary mascot? No, actually. This was actually hinted way back in I believe all right, Mystic Seven may Mystic Seven may have to correct me on this, but I believe it was February. This was okay. hinted back in February where they actually were promoting EB Day in Japan. And we were getting all of these images and these these sort of like grillers from Japan and from the Pokemon Corporation with plush toys of EVs. They were teasing a new evolution that we could get. Oh, and it's wow. basically been it's been EV City ever since then. And it wasn't until like a month and a half ago, maybe less than that, where we kind of started to put the pieces together and we actually were able to find out through a leak that, you know, they're pushing Eevee as a secondary mascot to rival Pikachu. So it's kind of makes sense the way they're doing Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu because they've been doing a lot of Eevee promotion. Nintendo gotcha. has start of 2018, but it's been more focused towards like you would know about it, I think, if you were in more of the like the Japan side, if you lived in Taiwan, right. Japan, mm -hmm. China, if you were more on that side of the world, you would have witnessed it a little bit more. Right. But you know, I don't think. I mean, I was oblivious to it. I didn't figure it out because we were because like for months we were trying to figure out like you know what's going on with the next new Pokemon game. Like we like I was losing my mind, she was losing her mind, he was losing his mind. Um, right. We were all just collectively just trying to figure out what was going to happen, and we kind of didn't see it. And it's interesting because the same exact thing kind of happened last year with Pokemon Sun and Moon, and Junisa Masuda, I believe, tweeted a picture of a sun and a moon. And then two days later, Pokemon Sun and Moon was mm -hmm. announced. So they always, they're always dropping hints. Um, very, very low key, but they're always dropping hints. Right. No, that's that's really interesting. It, it, I mean, honestly, what other Pokemon could really rival Pikachu? 
Eevees are pretty good, you know, like I, I don't really maybe Vulpix. Mm. Mm, maybe. What's interesting uh, is that they've kind of done this before. I mean you had Pokemon XD and Pokemon Coliseum for the Nintendo GameCube, where Eevee would be the first Pokemon that you get. Mm, and okay. you could raise the Eevee up. I always I always made my Eevee an Umbreon because Umbreon is such a tank in the yep. main series games. He would just take all the hits and I could just build I could literally raise my Pokemon and build up other Pokemon alongside Umbreon because Umbreon could take all the damage. Um, right. It was incredibly useful, but um, that's what they did with... They've been promoting Eevee low-key for a little while now. Yeah. They like Eevee. They like their Eevee in Nintendo. It A lot of people do. I mean, a lot of people, Eevee is like, you know... The suit, like the cutest thing in the world. I would. I mean, if there was ever a way to get to actually have peak, like a real Pikachu or a real Eevee, I mean, it'd be amazing. <laughs> but that'd be I awesome. Mean, yeah, I mean, but you also have to think about what their powers do, and then like, eh, how many times would you get, you know, thunder shocked by a <laughs> Pikachu before you're like, eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how, like. I think like Pokemon Go is like the closest we're gonna get to Pokemon in real life, but probably man, is yeah. it a really good experience? Like, you, you don't even have to have real Pokemon. Like Pokemon Go, I think is good enough. Maybe because yeah. mm-hmm. you know, if we had Pokemon flying around, like God only knows, we wouldn't be able to. Um, like, we, we wouldn't be able to properly function as a society. I don't <laughs> think. No, <laughs> no. I don't think other people would like. Other people would be able to handle pokemon in real life like other people can't handle pokemon the way it is now right i mean cre- Peta would be like you can't battle those pokemon <laughs> oh my god yeah uh, yeah they'd be like you can't battle them and like you know like it, it would be <laughs> in real life it'd be like oh my god there'd be like sarah mclaughlin on the pikachu shelter <laughs> commercial oh <my> god. <laughs> uh God, so so you've played a lot of the main series games, right? So that's cool. You you played more than me. I've played uh, red, blue, yellow. Um, the greats. I played X and Y and Alpha Sapphire. I'm still playing X and Y, but I beat Alpha Sapphire, which was really good. That was a very good game. Um, yes, indeed. I love that game, especially the the whole after the after the fact when you beat the game and then. You had that whole other storyline with Rayquaza and stuff. I was like, this "Oh, the is... Delta storyline yeah. was fantastic." Like, this is Absolutely. so good, so good. Um, so, uh, my question to you is, what is what is your favorite Pokemon? Oh, my favorite Pokemon, hands down, is Porygon. Porygon, Porygon is my favorite Pokemon nice. of all time. Yeah, that was actually my my. I I hated Porygon for a long time because it was my last Gen One Pokemon that I needed for the longest time. So rare. He's so rare, man. The longest time. Okay, this is how bad it got. So everybody finished their Pokedex. Remember when Gen One first came out? There yep. wasn't there wasn't all the there was nests and things like that, but there weren't events and all you know, to find certain Pokemon was super rare. Porygon was one of them. Um and <laughs> I remember someone was like, I've seen Porygon spawn by this Pokestop, by this Taco Bell, like over here like a couple times because i was asking people like where have you found a porygon so no joke i sat there with my car one day and staked it out for like six hours oh did he spawn no oh, <laughs> he did not spawn i ended up hatching him i was actually at a rhyhorn nest during gen one um and i ended up hatching him out of an egg that i got from that area so, wow, because Porygon was one of the rarest 5k eggs. I couldn't hatch them. Mm. I, I caught them all mine. Yeah, no, and then and then they had the Valentine's Day event, which then there was like little artificial nests of Porygon mm-hmm. like all over the place. I did a video of it because I found a spot that was giving like seven per hour. I mean, like, wow, yeah, so yeah, no, that's it. my that's literally my biggest Pokemon Go regret because the, the Valentine's event was the only event I actually wasn't playing Pokemon Go. Really, I, was, I I was it was like you live in you live up in Michigan like you know how it is man it's mm-hmm. it's cold oh. up here man. oh god yeah yeah people <laughs> and like, oh yeah it's when winter is full on you are either playing from your car because it's just gets so ridiculously cold I mean God you just don't want to deal with it I mean there was mm. there's there's a week where it was in the negatives for a while it was like negative 
10 and crap during the day it's like whoa wow i'm like going out in that stuff <laughs> yeah you had that you had that extra canadian air coming down from the jet stream to you guys so we, yeah. we don't even have it that bad right yeah it's so. Certain certain years will like get a mild winter one year like this last winter probably wasn't too bad, um, but there's been winters before that that were just like so much snow, so much cold, <laughs> so much everything. It makes me mm. it makes me really want to move. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you know I want to move to a place probably down south somewhere, um, that is more of a mild winter, and I understand most, that. Yeah, maybe one day, but my whole family's here, so it's kind of hard to move, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I, I don't know, like it, as badly as I like, as badly as I want to move out west somewhere, like I pride myself from, I pride myself on being from here. I get so what you're saying. Yeah, it's weird. So it's like I could go, but it's like I feel like I'm going against what. I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be here. So I get what you're saying. I'm like yeah. the, I'm like one of the only, well, one of the bigger Pokemon Go, uh, you know, YouTubers from Michigan. So I'm like the only one really repping Detroit. Really, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. So. Sinbad and I, Sinbad and I, well, I'm basically I'm. These these the misconception of me. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like, I I mean, I remember Dark Matter Wolf talked to me about this as well. But like, I feel like. The misconception was since like I was in Philadelphia so much that like people thought I lived in Philadelphia, but I actually yeah. am I'm South Jersey. So I'm I'm like New Jersey though. But like Philly's like like a twenty minute drive, but I I'm New right. Jersey. You know? Right. No, I get what you're and, saying. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a misconception there, but um it's interesting. But yep, I'm i I'm a Jersey kid, so but yeah, you know how it is up in the north, so it's um it's tough. It's tough, but I feel like we, we make it through every single winter, so it's all good. Right. I just wish, you know, there's only one place to play during the winter time where you can really get out and walk. And that's a place called Renaissance Center in Detroit. And it's the big it's GM's building. They own it. Um, oh, General Motors. Okay. Yeah, G General Motors Company. Yeah, they own this big huge building. It's this huge complex. Um Inside of it, it, it's actually a really good place to play. There's lots of rare spawns. Um, it, there's nothing like this place. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> if, you ever wow. came, if you ever came here, if any YouTuber ever came here, I'd be like, we're going to Rensen right now. Like Because you know, if I was going to show you guys around it, that'd be the first place I'd go because just random rare spawns pop up all the time there. There's been, wow. That's you know, more like Red Bank, right? right? That's my park. That's my home base. I was there today, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, there was like, there's been like wild Charizards, Dragonites, Unknown has been there before. I Ooh, mean, like that, just like Red Bank. Um, also, it's not it's not uncommon to catch a Pikachu, a Bulbasaur, a Squirtle. Just random. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon for that to happen there. So it's just like, oh look, a Bulbasaur. Oh look, a Pikachu. It's just like they're just there. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. just it's such a weird. So you got a you got a place like that where you, you know around where you live too. Yes, it's uh, it's Red Bank Park. I've done I've done so many videos there. Like so that's many. really cool. Yeah. Um, the spawns like I remember I've seen Dragonites, um, Lapras, Charizards, you name it. Every wow. single thing has spawned there. Literally everything. <laughs> and Pikachu's on the regular, Bulbasaur's on the regular, mm -hmm. Starters on the regular. Um, Very cool. Much, yeah. like, much like that area in, in Michigan. Yeah, it's so it's so hard to explain because when people don't have something like that by them, they're like, "You just they're got like, a what? Yeah, you just got a Bulbasaur that. and a and a like." There's been Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Top there before too, and like there's wow. just there's everything there. It's so That's weird. Impressive. It's very That's weird. Wow. But but like I said, if any YouTuber was gonna like visit me or wanted to check this area, I'd be like, "Let's go there." <laughs> you have to see it definitely you know? definitely yeah, so um and it's like a you just walk in a circle there's by probably about seven pokey stops and people just lure up the whole thing and just walk around in a circle pretty much and uh the place is actually really cool there's restaurants inside there oh, are there's great. a food court inside so um 
there's even a way to stock back up. There's a people mover. It's like this little subway thing that goes around the city. And you could just sit on that and spin Pokestops. It's a cost like a 75 cents. <laughs> jump wow, on. That's great. Yeah, you jump on it and just make a couple laps and you're stocked back up. Go back up and just start walking around again. So it's pretty cool, you know. But, uh, you know, I get sick of playing in the same place all the time. I always, and I'm sure you do as well. You want to go out and see new places and. Um, right you know explore a little bit which actually leads me to my next thing um you know what what was your what's the fa- what's your favorite place that you have visited so far while playing pokemon go um there's a lot there's a lot like i it's weird like all of a sudden like i used to go like nowhere like mm-hmm. before like youtube and all that stuff like i would i like i would take like maybe one trip a year and now all of a sudden i'm i'm here and there Right. Um, just out of nowhere, but I think the best trip and this was the first one. I don't know if this is biased or whatever, but it was. I think it was California at the Santa Monica Pier. Okay, and that that was just like I remember seeing that place in Mystic Seven's videos, and mm-hmm. I remember just seeing yep. all some spawns. I remember how nice it was, and I was like, man, like what what a dream it would be to actually go there one day. And check it out like that that place is legit man that that place is so awesome yeah i, I love i love california i love the weather like it was 80 degrees january like oh I, man oh my god and then when i went i'll never forget feeling the cold when i went oh, back god. home <laughs> oh. out the plan, i was like oh all right well that's that's uh back to reality you know oh god that cold is so mm. You you know how it is. You have to start your car at least ten minutes beforehand, before doing yep. anything. You know, so yeah, no, that's oh god, that's terrible. Um, no, that's really cool. You know, that's really cool. I, I, mine, mine still has to be. Did you go? Are you hyped for this Go Fest coming up? Because I am definitely absolutely. I am so be, hyped for this. So I the potential for this Go Fest. First of all, I I have all my chips on the table. And I will gamble a lot and say that Nancy is going to throw a 150% better go oh. fast all across mm-hmm. the board through connectivity, through I agree. player I agree. engagement, pretty much everything. Everything is going to be much better. Plus, we're getting, uh, I think we're getting Torkoal as well, which is fantastic. Yes. yes. So, uh, were you at the first go fest? Yes, I was. Interestingly okay. enough, I had my YouTube channel at mm-hmm. the first Go Fest, but I was so like I was so new. Like I literally I brought my camera like two weeks before Go Fest and I was just learning stuff. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, you can check out my Go Fest video. It's like all the way down my channel with like 50 views. It's like one of the, my oldest things I ever released. Really... <laughs> right. But um Yeah, it's it's gonna be exciting this time around, but I think things are gonna be a little bit different. But yeah, I think um go fest was even though there were there were like issues and people couldn't play yeah, and yeah. my game was lagging but you know once once the event was spaced out x yes. two miles to allow people to actually get out into the city it was so much fun especially when the the legendary drops oh god yes i remember i just remember like we we took over downtown chicago we did when yep. niantic were when I think dropped the legendaries when, when lugia came to pokemon go we literally took that city over yes and it was yep. awesome it was like it felt like i don't know it just i all i remember is i remember myself sprinting across chicago mm-hmm. i i drove there it was a 12-hour drive um oh wow yeah 12 hour drive um there and back Mm -hmm. and i was just it was one of those situations where you're just in the moment and you don't really know where you're at but you don't really care Mm -hmm. and you're just here to have fun and catch pokemon and let's just let's catch them all let's do it let's do it it was it was awesome we randomly and i forgot her name oh my god we randomly met up with another level 40 because she was like, I don't want to raid with these people. Uh, she was being kind of elitist, but whatever. So me, me, <laughs> and, me and my friend, she were 40, and she kind of like grouped up with us for a night, and we just started running around together that whole entire night together. And we were actually – we were planning out, like, if we get to this raid – because you, you remember that night, all the raids everywhere. You, mm. you If you ran to a couple of them, you were getting a lot more done. So we were – 
we were sprinting to the next one and the next one and the next one. And it's just like, by the end of that day, my feet hurt so bad. I remember, Ooh, yeah. I remember, I was like, oh my God, my legs are going to break. Like, uh, it, it was a very long day because it was a lot of walking during GoFest and then a lot of running around for raids after. So, what a day, man. Yeah. I, was like, I didn't know they released Articuno at the time. You didn't like, know I that? Luke, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Then I saw, I was like, that Articuno, what? And I was like, I yeah. was gone from there. I was like, is that, there's no way. I was like, there's no way. There's no way there's Articuno. Right. I was right. like, I have to get that too. So I was like, Boom. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I was, I was freaking out. I actually... I have good souvenirs from there. I have a ninety-eight percent Lugia that I got Whoa. from Chi- that I got from Chicago, and I also have a ninety-eight percent Articuno that I got from Chicago. So wow, that's incredible! Um, and they had the hundred percent catch rate, right? So everybody was. Yep. Just, I mean, I remember Melissa Zabowski. She caught one with her nose. She was like, "What? You know, yeah, because everybody was catching. It's a hundred percent catch rate, right? So everybody was just, and uh, oh God, my friends were being so funny they're like they're like free lugia look and they're just they're because sh- there's so many people playing they'd pick blissies and just dodge the whole time i mean because <laughs> they they, oh, God, they, the they ran out of items okay so they're running out of like heals and all that you know potions and revives and stuff so what they would do is just pick blissey and just dodge the entire time while the rest of the everyone beat it and i was just like what are you guys doing like <laughs> oh man God, it it was so fun, but that night I swear, they kept they were they kept those raids going forever. I felt like I it know was, that was the best thing. Like I I wish they would do that right like, now. At least extend the raid timers yeah. like an hour right now because mm-hmm. um I know a lot of people on Twitter have complained about this as well. You know there are people that I there are people that work and they don't get off work in time to like to make the raids. Yep. Like, I can That's... totally feel that because I I work as well and yep me too. Um, I yep. Cheat, I changed my I changed my schedule around to like kind of accommodate being able to go out during the day. So like yeah. I started at four a.m. and I ended around like twelve one. So oh, then wow. like that okay gives me, that gives me a chance to get out there. I, I get no sleep, but um, because <laughs> editing and such things. But right, at right. least that gives me an opportunity to go out there and like get some stuff done in, for my channel and such. So, um, but well, I, I get it. I totally understand that. Yeah. Well, I – I get out of work at like five, which is my previous job. I got out at six, but raids end at seven thirty. So yeah. if I go home, I got to eat real quick and then start looking on Discord or my friends or whatever, and be like, "Hey, what's going on? Where's the raids?" Blah blah blah. And occasionally, I'll be able to do a couple. Sometimes I can do none. So it's kind of sucks, you know. But we, me and my friends, we kind of plan raid days out on the weekends, which is cool. Like, for instance, this Sunday, we're planning on raiding. We're getting a whole group together, and we're just going to raid like crazy, you know? So Yeah, get yourself a shiny Kyogre. Yeah, no. It's, and you definitely need a good team for that one. It's not one you can kind of... No, it's <laughs> not. Kyogre is Tiger's tough. It's probably one of the toughest ones right now. I mean, if it has mm. Blizzard, you're like, eh. No, Blizzard, <laughs> Better- like, I, it's, so, it's so frustrating. I guess not frustrating, but, like, kind of suck because, like, I look at my Kyogre team and like no matter which way you <laughs> yep. like which way you align it, Blizzard will totally annihilate your team. Blizzard yep. will just like no There's no annihilate. yeah. There's no hope for it. Yeah. It used to happen too with uh when Articuno was around. Same thing. If it had Blizzard, it was still tough. It was not as hard as Kyogre. But right, yeah. When it when it had Blizzard, I remember it just like crap. We got eleven people. Is that enough? Like, yeah, I really, I really hope so. You know, like, you know. And then meanwhile, you're beating Ho's with like five and six people. You know, yeah. just, <laughs> right. So it's just like, ugh, yeah. So it, it, I, I feel it. You know, and I, I was just having this discussion, and I, I don't mind talking about this with uh, the EX raids. You know, and the way they time those out, and so. I don't know. I disagree with some of the timings on it, I, and I'm I'm aware some people have never gotten a Mewtwo yet, so I apologize because I'm crying about something that you don't even have. But yeah, I, I cried. My whole I think my whole like the first real big part of my channel was me just doing Mewtwo EX raid videos and like mm-hmm. how to get one and like I've done 
God, I've done so many Mewtwo because I was like obsessed with it and, and people were like mm-hmm. getting into it and people were like, yeah, man, like how do you get a Mewtwo EX ray? I'm like, I don't know, but we just figured this out and like this happened, like <laughs> it's a revolving door of like, but this was back in the beta period because we didn't know about the beta period because Niantic tells us nothing. Right. And yeah. um, this is back in the beta period when we were trying to figure out like what the heck is going on with this thing? Like why are people getting EX passes like, and why are people not getting them? And right. Like, uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Pokey AK was on my uh, on on the podcast a couple episodes back, and he he's done eighteen or seventeen of them, mm. and and he knows how to trigger them. There are ways you can actually trigger them, and his there his, are and there are and there's a lot. Yeah. Again, was, that's an entirely other process in of itself. Mm. I did a I did a video on that as well, and um, I think Trainer Tips actually really liked it really liked it as well. He did. Train Tips and I did some videos about a lot of people did about the S S twelve, I believe it is, S twelve or S thirteen cell map that you can lay out and you can lay out mm. um parks and areas that are labeled as parks on open street map. And yes. you can yep. actually mark them and it's a lot of different things you can do to actually, you know, trigger the Mewtwo EX ray. Yeah. And it was like um Pokey AK explained it really quick. He was just like, you know, first you open up open street maps. Find a find a gym that is actually a park, labeled a park. Then when there's a raid there, bring like eighteen to twenty people or whatever, do a raid there, and it's, it has a good chance of being you've just triggered it right there. So yep. and the one EX pass I have next week, it was not only it not only did we have like eighteen, twenty people in the group there was it was also a sponsored one so it was just like this is definitely oh, okay. we like knew right away like okay this is a sprint store we're gonna definitely yep. get the ex ray you know for sure so yeah and you know it, and you got it yeah the the downside and this is what i was getting at is the timing of the scheduling that they have for forum sometimes seems completely random to me because i've had friends that be, god dude it should be on weekends and, and yes. that's the only thing that's feasible because that's that's what i feel too but you know then there's a there's a bunch of people saying well i work the weekends but i would say majority of the people don't though that's the thing right and you majority have... of the people don't and the majority of the people can be there during the day that's why community days have been so successful being on weekends because more people can go out and play and every time i there is a community day any major city that there's a lot of people at i see tons of people yes it's 200 it's people walking massive. around you know the, the community day that i was just in in texas that was at least 200 people right like it, it's been crazy um i have another community day coming up in indianapolis god knows how many but right it, it, community day has been beautiful it's been amazing and i'm so glad that um pokemon co and i actually decided to put that together and I feel like Community Day is a victory for us as content creators and us oh, as yeah. fans because it's Niantic acknowledging us as the player base, as the fan mm-hmm. base. It's Niantic acknowledging the fan base and say, hey, we're going to give you something dope every month. We're, gonna, we're just going to give you something. We're going to give you something amazing yes. every month. It's you're really cool. Love. Yeah. And it gets, the, it gets the community together, and it's a fantastic way to increase player engagement and player retention is also very critical at this stage. Oh yeah, definitely. Because like we're gonna we're gonna play, you know, no matter what, we're playing. Absolutely, we're, we're in it. But there's still a lot of people that are still casuals or semi, even semi casual, you know, and they only play during events or they only play, you know, like they only play when there's big things going on. Let's say so. Yes, and and that's okay. That's okay. That's that's it's completely. It's been a revolving door of events since January, I think. So, they they've been they've been nonstop with the shinies and the everything with the double or there would be double XP, double Stardust, shinies, what have you. Um, right. Natic has. That's also something I wanted to bring up on the podcast. Um, if you didn't mind. Yeah. Was, sure. Yeah. How do you feel about, like how do you feel about the frequent events in Pokemon Go? The frequent shiny events, it, I just feel like at this point Pokemon Go is just a revolving door of shinies just coming just right. constantly being released. Like I remember like um I was thinking that you know there's going to be at least one day 
where we have a normal – we have literally had one or two mm-hmm. normal days of gameplay in the past – I think at least the past two months. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's been constant. And, and I wish they would space them out a little bit more, to be honest, because I – you know – some of my friends go real hard. You know what I mean? There are shiny obsessed. Okay. Let's just That's put it me. That way. That's me. And you it's, know? it's killing me because. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's yes. Miss, you know? Yes. Have you gotten any shinies this event so far? No. And I didn't get anything mm-hmm. in the rock event. The last shiny I got was Polo. Okay. Well, at least you got that. That's a, that's right. a rare one. Um, but going, going backtracking a little bit, because I'm glad you brought that up. The, the community in June, um, uh, Pokemon Master Holly actually got on my live stream, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, and she's like, "You should come to Indianapolis with us." And I'm like, "I'm like, I don't know, maybe, but no." After talking to you, I'm like, "Man, maybe I should," <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. It's and, I think it's gonna be massive. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not again. I I um I, I'm just like tagging along. I'm, I'm just gonna be there, but I think it's gonna be great. Plus, we're getting it's rumored that we're getting again. I don't. I don't like to be like, um, this is happening or that is happening. Mm-hmm. It's heavily rumored that we're getting SmackDown for the quick move. Yes, yes. Which is going to completely change the game for Tyranitar. It's going to make Tyranitar a beast as it always should have been. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I have so many Avatars just ready to go. And I, have, I have two 93% IVs waiting. So um. I have like... I'm, the thing is, like, the only thing I really care about, other than SmackDown, is Shiny Pupitar. Shiny Pupitar. Once I get mm-hmm. two Shiny Lavatars plus all my Lavatars are evolved, I'm done. I'm good. Right. I don't even care about Shinies this event. The, I mean, they kind of look bad. I mean, the, the, it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's not the best shiny looking Pupitar, Shiny. Though. Yeah, that is a cool looking one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I always like to keep one of every evolution. So. Like, I do too. Yeah, so like if with Dr- Dratini, I had to get you know the Dragonair and Dragon. I needed every single one of them. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is a game changer for sure. If, I'm I'm afraid they're gonna nerf it somehow. Like you know, kind of how they did Blast Burn, and they're like, hey, uh, <laughs> you know, this move is amazing. It's not as good as you think it is. You know, type of thing. And yeah, uh, yeah. I just hope the damage isn't being calculated incorrectly, and we realize it's actually not that great. But I mean, I, I have high hopes for it. I think it's going to probably be really good. Um, and and it, isn't this the first time it's actually a quick move? Yes, this is the first. So, it, if it is smack, if it is SmackDown, then this will be the first rock type, um, the first quick move, new quick move incorporated in Pokemon Go. So I'm I'm excited for that. Right, and you know, well, another thing is uh, how vastly different this game because, like, you know how you were talking about Pokemon Go is like a revolving door of people. I mean, if if anybody's going to get latched onto the game now, it's going to be now because they got quests in the game. You can get Mew. You know, there's like all these little extra things that that. Make it easier to level. Make it easier to get Stardust. Yeah. Make it e- you know, with the weather events, um, like the weather changes, it's almost yeah. it's almost made nests obsolete because, right. like, why do you need to go Unless to nests? Right, right. Which I mean, I'm still down for. You know, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still, still I'm now. Now they've got me looking around for the Ammonite and Kabuto nest because I, I still want those shinies and like. Yeah, I, I just got... go. I just go ham to the point where, like, I I remember I I grinded for Shiny Kabuto and Almanay for like twenty four hours straight during the mm. first two days of the event. Like, I I got into the city at the start of the event at around yep. four. I didn't leave. I don't even remember when I left. God, <laughs> I don't remember when I left, <laughs> the city, man. I oh. it was such a long time after, but like, right. Um. I, I grinded to the point where I couldn't like I didn't feel like walking anymore. So I was like, all right, let me let me take a breather. Um, yeah, yeah, I got super lucky this last event. I cannot say anything. So um I got four shinies in one day, which that I did a video on it, it's insane. I got a shiny ho oh to start the day, then I got wow. a shiny ammonite, and then a shiny kabuto, and then another shiny ammonite that night. And I was just like 
Trust me, though, my luck for shinies have been always terrible. Fighting event, I got zero, and I had, and I did like over seven hundred encounters each on both of them, and still nothing. So, wow. yeah. So, and my friend, my friend Rob, he was around twelve hundred encounters before he got his first shiny Meditite. It's, wow. Yeah, but I've seen that. I've seen that. Like yeah. twelve, fourteen hundred encounters, and you get your first shiny. But that's insane. Yeah, and some people like I, I don't know. I don't know if you saw Reversal's last video about <laughs> I was in it about the, you know, shiny reactions or whatever. And it was everyone was just like, like not reacting. It was like most the most mundane monotone reaction. ever. <laughs> and it, it, it was it was for humor, right? It's all for humor. It was just to be funny. Um, and some people were taking it as, oh, shinies are too uh too common in the game or something. People are like making up their own stuff. And I'm like, no, it's a joke. Uh, it's a joke. Yeah. It's clearly a joke. And it's just, I just, it just surprises me. It's like shinies are not that common except for community no. day. If you're counting community except day, that's it. That's it. Other than it's that, the fact that a lot of people think that Niantic came up with the shinies, the, the looks of the shinies, but no, 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 no. you and I know that it's these shinies have been a part of Pokemon since yeah. they came. Since those Pokemon were released, they've had that shiny form. Right. No, some people don't even. Re <laughs> some people think Diantic made up Pokemon or something, and they're, oh. they're the ones in charge of it. And it's like, dude, you there's they're on like Gen Eight, man. Like, I know. Like, Seriously. wake up, man. <laughs> like, they are way ahead of this game. Yeah, yeah, in. <laughs> They're they're way beyond that. That's the only thing that I fear about for the next game, like the next main series games, because like everyone's still into the like you know. Uh, I also heard that that uh, the Let's Go Pikachu is basically like a yellow remake. Yeah, in in a way, like they're, they're doing it, and it's gonna you know, it looks very similar to like Red and Blue. You know, you can see it. It does. It's the Cancer Region. It's basically the Cancer Region remastered and remastered again. Yeah, we yeah. already had Cancer Region remastered on Fire Red. One of the most fantastic Pokemon games of all time, might I add. Right, um, definitely. So it's basically Fire Red remastered with a let's with a Pokemon Yellow vibe. It's it's a really good uh, it, concept. But it, yes, you're correct. Yeah, I mean, it looks it looks really like some people are saying, you know, like you can't, um, like, oh, can you battle in the Let's Go Pikachu? And I'm like, yeah, you can clearly battle. Yes. You know. So. Now it's whether I'm interested to see whether. You're going to be able to um, battle other people, which it looks oh, like you might yeah. be able to. But again, I don't think all the details have been discussed yet. And we're still waiting around to see what exactly they have in store. Because they said they're not going to use the Nintendo Switch online service. So it's, it's a little tricky, but I'm just waiting for Nintendo to say, hey, well... Want to battle your friends? Is how you do it, and that that brings up another subject. You know, is this is PvP and trading for Pokemon Go? Is that how? Um, is Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu going to be the outlet for PvP and trading in Pokemon Go? Which I hmm. I can see a lot of I can see that turning off a lot of people. What do you think? I I don't know. They should have PvP by itself in Pokemon Go. I think it's gonna. You're right. That's gonna turn a lot of people off because it's good. It's gonna be like this. Oh, you don't have three hundred dollars, then you can't PvP. That's just yeah. like you know. It's just gonna seem like that, and you know, I don't think every Pokemon Go player is gonna buy the Switch like we did, you know, or had or whatever, right? Just to play Let's Go, you know, Pikachu or Eevee. Um, so uh, they definitely have to do their own PvP in the game. I mean, it's. It's clear they got to do it, um, and I, I I have high hopes for for the PVP. Like I can't wait for it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Oh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, I I have gone as far as scouting out areas that look like like it would be a good place to battle people in. <laughs> and yeah, for like have, for like videos and stuff. AR, they had to have AR in the gyms. They took that out. I'm not sure why they did. That. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was cool. I still want. I mean, I'm I'm an Android user, right? So I'm still waiting for right. my version of AR Plus, like our version of AR Plus. Like, where's that at? You know? Yeah, but there, Google's AR Core and stuff they have to work on with that. A lot of technical stuff, but I feel like once they get it going, you know, we're, Android will have AR Plus. But the thing is, Android is so much more 
technical and like some certain phones will have it and certain phones won't and right right when people can like get a little messy with android then apple because apple they have their one they have their one phone Mm -hmm. i guess they maybe have other two or three other different variants they may have a couple older versions but basically they have the one phone they got the, the three providers and that's it with android there's freaking um samsung lg mm-hmm. um google i have a google i'm running a google pixel 2 right now mm-hmm. and yeah. uh god what else is there um i mean i i'm using the yeah, s8, that's a lot. i'm using the galaxy s8 plus which i love it i love it um it it actually runs pokemon go perfect i have no problems with mm-hmm. it at all um and you know, like I had an S7 Edge, which I had a lot of issues with. It was overheating and stuff. That's what so, I had. I um, got the Pixel 2. Yep. I heard the Pixel 2 is great. Like, great phone. Real Very snappy. Very good phone. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I, I like my phone. It's funny because you'll get somebody who buys the, you know, Boost Mobile Metro PCS crappy phone that they spend mm. 50 bucks on. They're like, man, Pokemon Go runs like crap on this Android phone. And I'm like... Yeah, right. The thing costs fifty dollars. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a secret. Like, nothing makes me cringe more. <laughs> and like with meetups and community days and stuff like that, when I look at people's phone screen, I just see like the old Androids and Pokemon Go just run so bad on their phone. Oh yeah. Um, have you ever seen that? Like people, like people play with like the really like the bad Androids and like, the old Android, the old operating system or Pokemon oh, Go. Yeah, yeah. Yep. so slow and it's so laggy and it's like oh god it just oh yeah <laughs> like it's cool it's cool like that's your phone that's how you play cool. like i don't know there's something in the back of my brain that just makes it boil when i see that the only thing that's worse is the guy that plays the game at max volume <laughs> yeah seriously. He's, walk- he's walking around and you just hear everything he's doing and you're like <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing yeah <laughs> There, there was a couple of guys like that at uh, at Rensen, right? And I told you it's a circle, right? So you're just mm-hmm. like we would run away from those people, just like it's so loud. Like they they have it at literally max volume, set music on, sound effects on, everything, and you could just hear. Wow, you know everything. Full, the full experience, man. <laughs> they want to experience the full game. There you go. Yeah, everything. they they definitely were. They definitely were. Uh, but. Yeah, man. I, I think I'm going to have to go to Indianapolis. I mean, I, I want to. It's only a five-hour drive. I've looked it up. Um, but to meet up with you guys would be really cool. I mean, that'd be awesome. Um, hey, man. You are you are absolutely more than welcome to. It's going to be mm-hmm. a real fun event. And um, I all I know is as soon as that community day hits, I'm evolving all my law retards and I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting that SmackDown move, and I am very looking forward to it. Right. So we're... We, uh, you know, I asked uh, asked uh, on Twitter, and uh, we've actually already made it to fifty like two minutes already, which is crazy, right? Like that went pretty mm-hmm. fast. That went you, pretty you, fast. that happens with me, man. That, that yeah, happens it's good. With me. It's good. It's good. And also, you know, go fast. I can't wait till we all meet up. That's gonna be really fun. I, I really, Seriously, it's gonna, like... it's gonna be so fun. I, I really feel like we're gonna. I feel like the YouTube community in general, over the past like year or so, has been a lot tighter and yes seriously yes it's been way tighter and i feel like you know even you doing this with me you know i thank you this is awesome you know it's just we're all coming together and it's it's a really good feeling you know so it's like, it's I'll, I'll never forget was i remember it was either before or after go fast or i was just like i was just, just this kid you know i i mean i'm 23 i still refer to myself as a kid some people mm-hmm. say man whatever you want to call me right um but I remember I was just like this dude, and I, I remember I saw Tranches for the first time. Like, we were just like, he was going this way, and I was going that way. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, Tranches! He was like, he was like, hi, oh my God. He was like, Tranches was like, hey. And then, like, you <laughs> fast forward, as you fast forward a year later, and it's like, whoa. Like, mm-hmm. I, I literally met and hung out with the guy. And yes. like, it's, it's surreal. Like, looking at myself from last year, like, like just marveling at the fact that I said hi to the guy. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's mm-hmm. absolutely insane. So this, this game um, has definitely built not only a more, a more tight knit YouTube community, but overall a more tight knit community 
So I, I just can't thank Niantic enough for, for what they've done. And they've, they've absolutely done so much better. They've done a lot better job in 2018 than they've done in 2016 or 2017. Like they've true. done so Very true. well. Yeah. And I just hope they continue to progress and to make the right decisions to mm-hmm. move this game forward for Niantic to become the, the overall, just the best AR development company that they could possibly be. So they're making strides and I'm very happy for them. I mean, I'm happy with them as well. So, yeah, I mean, they, they were really bad at communication pre go fest. Yes. They were so bad. We never knew what was coming and you want to talk about like, you know, we're, we're getting tons of events now, but before we barely got anything, if you remember. No. It, man, no. it was always on, like, Halloween. Remember the Halloween event and all these – it was always on those times, and it was never – there were no Shinies at the time, obviously. No. Nope. Um, but uh, the, the events were super just few and far between. And I think people are getting kind of overwhelmed. I'm, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, I can't. I just want to like, I just want to grind. I don't want to shiny hunt all the time. But like, right. when, mm-hmm. you're, like, when you're in my position, you're kind of forced to a little bit. But no, I right. just want to, I just want to. But this time I'm just like, all right, I'm just grinding my stardust. I'm going to get. The seven million stardust career wise right this event. that's my goal if i get a shiny <laughs> i get it but i can't i can't let my pokemon go experience be directly God, what's the word i'm looking at? directly tethered to my shiny success because <laughs> right. hey, it's all rng man it's right. all random oh, it, it, it is seriously luck my friend sam and chris if you're listening to this what's up they probably not but <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they the very first day yesterday, I think it was where the water event started. Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. But anyway, they started. They go to this place that we normally go to. They got seven shinies that day. And they're like, they're like, it must be increased, blah, blah, blah. And I go, I don't think so. I think you're just lucky. And they're like, no, that can't be it. I go out to the same place, spend two hours, you know, like the time that I can on it. Don't get a single one. There, It's like, it's like. It's like you got you got seven in a day. Like what the heck? You know, so. <laughs> it's, it's it's like it's driving me crazy, man. Yeah. I'm I, <laughs> yeah. I'm like that is I'm uh, that has been if I have any struggle right now, it's um it's with shinies. That's that's my struggle oh, right yeah. now, man. Yeah, like, it, it's driving me insane. But um yeah, I'm hanging in there though. <laughs> All right, let's let's get to some of these questions. Okay, because uh. Let's uh um let's see. First question is from Christian983. It's gonna pop up on the screen right now. It says, uh, with another event going on, water event, do you think Niantic is planning to have a new event after every two weeks? Or do you think this event there are going to keep us entertained for something major upcoming this summer? So excellent question. Um, that's a very good question. Yes. I remember, and I, I mean, were we just talking about that too? How like we're getting. Uh, we, yes. Yeah, I know. It's just perfect. Yeah. So what I think now, I think these events are holding us over till something big. Mm-hmm. I believe something big is coming. Uh, I said company coming. Um, yes. It may be around go fast. It may be a little after go fast. Um, it's going to be, huge and i feel like these events are like this is niantic's ticket like this is how they they all got together in their offices and said hey how do we buy some time for the next huge update which like last huge update was quest they mm-hmm. were saying shinies everybody's reacting for shinies let's, let's cycle shinies in and out right and let's buy some time till we get the next huge update whether that be um pvp or um trading something massive coming to the game so i I think i I think they're buying us some time but they're doing a fantastic job of it because um they're getting people super occupied with the game they're getting super they're getting people super into it meanwhile driving me insane but that's like hey they can care less about me (laughs) they they hey um but they are doing a really good job of player retention the player retention is so key to what mm-hmm. they're doing right now, and they're doing a fantastic job of it because they're giving us a. I I think it, we refer to it a lot 
like within my community as like a drug kind of like <laughs> yeah the new comes out he gotta go get it. it's like oh yeah no thing and it's i mean it's, it's a fantastic business strategy but it's also fantastic mm-hmm. psychologically right it's fantastic psychologically because with i mean this is getting a little deep here but <laughs> human nature and the way we operate it's a fantastic manipulation of the human conscience and the human mind because that's how that's how you get somebody to get hooked onto something because no you're right new, that is attractive that is continuously released in different formations builds a certain obsession within the inner conscious and the subconscious of the human mind and they're kind of taking advantage of that of that in a little bit in the terms of shinies so oh again, definitely it's like a like a mind control mechanism they they know what they're doing they know what I they're mean, doing not, I, not to mention i mean the ultra box that they have right now is so worth it that ultra box i love they, the ultra box I'm, that, I'm buying i'm buying a couple tomorrow they are that i i <laughs> I'm like blown away how much stuff they're giving. I mean, there's Ooh, yes. like it's insane what they're giving. It's, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I have a prediction. I do believe that what they're going to be releasing at GoFest is going to be PvP, and I think they're going to kick it off with something like Team Rocket related or something. I don't know. I kind of feel like they're going to be like defeat Team Rocket, and then that's going to be like the first. Maybe there's another type of battle that you can do that's going to lead into pvp i don't know i just have what yeah because they had they had the mew quest which was the mythical quest and then you had Mm -hmm. the field research quest so it's like something bigger that leads into this main method this main new game mode so you can do something there and i like that i like that a lot we'll see It, it would give a good pve aspect too because if they did team rocket raids you could work together and it feel more like I don't know. You're doing raids together, but they need something else to kind of get you engaged. This would work. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think it'd be pretty cool. I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, yep, here's PvP released at GoFest. I'd be like, let's do it. <laughs> you yeah, know? I, that'd be cool. Yeah. I'd like that because we got, we got legendary raids at GoFest. Right. Yep. They kicked that off. Um, but anyway, yeah, before we end the podcast, is there anything you want to say uh, before we end it here? Um,. I would just like to say that it has been an absolute pleasure being a part <laughs> of the podcast and um, huge shout out to Pokemon Go and the Pokemon Company to Niantic for um, teaming up with Game Freak and trying to merge the two parties of Pokemon Main Series fan base and Pokemon Go fan base, trying to, trying to put them together as well as broaden the fan base to try to improve the numbers of Pokemon fans. And I feel like Pokemon in general, is taking a huge step in the right direction. Definitely. And I'm very excited to see what comes out of all this. But, you know, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for the conversation. You know, I I really do live for these types of conversations. Yeah, and this was awesome. That, I, totally. I eat, sleep, breathe Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's, that's the way it's always going to be. So, yeah, yeah, it was a pleasure being on here, man. Yep, thank you. Yep, definitely have to have you on again for sure. Thank you. And that is going to do it for the podcast, guys. DX1, what a great guy. I can't wait to actually meet him face-to-face at GoFest. And it's going to be awesome. Well, also meet all of you guys face-to-face as well. That's going to be great. So, uh, yeah. If you like this podcast, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Later.